Uh, yeah, I love fish. Yeah, I, I kind of, I kind of, that was something introduced to me when I went to college at Plattsburgh State, upstate New York, and fish was already a big, kind of popular, and I didn't, I hadn't heard of fish in high school. But once I went to college in Plattsburgh, fish actually came to play Plattsburgh. So that was like, wow. And then I you know, easily hop over to Potsdam, see them there for five bucks, you know, with a college ID. Then you go over and see them at the Flint Theater in Burlington. Then I go see them in Montreal. So it was like really easy to like kind of tour with fish when you're in college, when they were playing all around you. This is like 1992, around then, 92, 93. So that was like really easy to like just hop right over to the and enjoy seeing live fish because it was like all around me and they were new like it was newish you know because i was listening to the dead since i was like in sixth grade you know it was like all of a sudden it was kind of like my discovery you know it wasn't and it was i loved the music and also like trey anastasio and fishman the drummer john fishman would come and play at jc's jazz club in downtown plattsburgh it a, and it was like totally not advertised and you could get a party and then someone would say uh, JC Jazz Club, and like you just like you don't tell anybody, you just like you and your buddies like tiptoe out of the party and go there because you didn't want like the whole jazz club killing up with you know 100 college kids, so you could go there and watch them play and like sit at the bar and like have a beer with Trey and Fisherman. It was pretty, pretty awesome. Clifford Ball, that was like one of my all-time favorite fish experiences. It's a three-day concert. It was in 1995, summer of 1995. And it was at the airport, um, the old Air Force Base in Plattsburgh, and they played three, three nights, and they played three sets a day. And they, you can go from your tent into the show, in and out, you had a bracelet. It was, you can just go in and out anytime you wanted. It was just fantastic. <laughs> it was like, I was like, every concert festival should be like this. Yeah, well, the first show in 1987 at Madison Square Garden, I went with my older brother, Mike, and he, and I went with Bill Glenn and Sergio Bonilla, and, my brother drove us down there and was just like, he just dropped us off in the parking lot, was like, don't get in trouble, and just left us with like a 12 pack of beer and <laughs> we were 16 and it was pretty yeah, awesome. I remember seeing Dead at, um, in Highgate, Vermont. That was really, really fun. Just, it was just outside and just really natural. It was in the middle of a farm. Like it wasn't like a normal studio, not studio, like a stadium, I should say. It was like literally in the middle of a farm in Highgate, Vermont. And we got the camp out there, and you could just walk into the show like from your tent. It's great. It was like really, you know, it was, it was fantastic. Uh, but um, yeah, we'd go on tour, like not tour, but maybe you know, follow them, see them in Albany, then see them in Rhode Island, then see them in Maryland, and then went and stay with you. So like, I would do like a small little East Coast tour, but you could saw them in Vermont, Albany, you know, kind of bounce around East Coast tour, but never. It's always just like during college and taking long weekends. Actually, Pink Floyd was my first concert ever. I went with my parents and my older brother <laughs> in Nassau Coliseum. That was when I was in ninth grade, so I was young. So it's like before I was allowed to go to concerts. I had like all the theatrics with like the bed and the pigs flying and all. They had all the, it's much more elaborate show than like compared to The Dead where it was just like a light show. So I know it was a euphoric feeling, yeah. Especially like when you got it all down right and we like got the timing right and you like finally like end the song and you were just like, wow, that came out. Like to what we thought it was great. <laughs> so that was like euphoric, I thought. It was like, you, you, it's the best feeling ever. Something I miss. I wish I kind of kept playing the drums. I kind of, it kind of faded away when I went to college, but I wish I kind of kept it. Um, it's a huge part of my life. It's like a soundtrack. It's like whenever, yeah, whenever you have to an event or emotion, I feel like it's always tied to music in some way. There's always like music playing in the background or in your head or just, it's always on. I always have music on. I'm at home with music. When you're but it, it kind of it kind of makes me laugh or smile and maybe I can appreciate when we were younger like literally making tapes, like hitting pressing play and hitting record at the same time to so like <laughs> tape and tape and get your new Maxell twos to record concerts and getting bootlegs from what's his name? Joe the taper lived on Joe Castino, yeah. 